Ah, good afternoon, chaps. I recently uh, read the article in the Practical Wireless about the FT408R and the FT708R. A good article and very interesting, and uh, some tips in it. Now, um, over the f past couple of years, I've had a couple of these radios, and uh, what I've decided to do today was uh, see if I can implement some of the the uh, things that's on the uh, magazine. Now. One of these radios is a 1 kilohertz, 12 and a half, and 25 kilohertz steps. Um, now, I'll just double check to make sure I'm not telling you any lies. There you go. There's the full step, so it's 25. Middle step, 12 and a half. Small step, 1. And this radio here, on the full, it's 100. Okay. Medium, it's 25. And small, 1. So, this radio, I wanted to change it to um, the, bit, this, the steps that gives you 1, 12.5 and 25. So, I opened it up and lo and behold, diode 11 is there. But removing diode 11 killed the, the 1 on the display. We had that. We had only 45 or whatever it would be showing. And uh, it did not change the steps. The steps was the same. So... After I got the manual out uh, for the for the 480s, uh, the, the official um, manual, which of course comes with the all the uh, the details that you require uh, for just about everything, it's got the circuit diagram, etc., in it, and the, uh, the setups. And the, you can see this has been well used. We have five different models: A, B, C, D, and E. Now, obviously, the one I have is Type B. And as you can see, the crosses on the uh, the lines for the diode means they're installed. But <laughs> this is where it got a bit strange. My my radio has got diode four zero one one installed, okay, and it, uh, it ties up with Type B. So removing diode four zero one one did not change it at all. It didn't make any difference. So, uh, it was getting a bit thinking, okay, so what radio do I actually have here? So, it doesn't tie in with any of them on this list, unfortunately. Uh, so, removing diode 401, 4011 uh, did not help me. What I probably would need to do here to get uh, this radio to operate on 12.5 kilohertz is to incorporate these other diodes Um either for type E or type D. So that is an ongoing job that I need to do. So just to let you know that the information on, although it's probably correct for some radios on practical wireless, it is not for all of them. Now, the other modification is a modification that I've known about in the past. And uh, again, I have an issue with it. The other modification is to give low power on SSB. And as we know, uh, that would be quite useful for um, you know, driving a transverter and you can adjust the, the low power output to, to virtually nothing all the way up to I think you, I think you can more or less get more or less full power out of it uh, by adjusting that pot. It's got quite a long uh, adjustment range. Now, um, if you'll be wondering why I'm I'm showing S an S reading, <laughs> I've got my Nano VNA um, set to one four five, and I've, it's connected on an onto an aerial. I actually was looking uh, for the spot SWR resonance at that particular frequency, but of course it actually turns into a, a, a little transmitter. So the, these two radios are actually picking up. Now they're both with. Um, uh, into dummy loads, um, the big dummy load there at the back beside the, the green tin and the, the, the power meter uh, is on the left hand radio and on the back radio all we've got is, a, a, to, be, to be fair, it's a few resistors there stuck in the back, I don't have another, <laughs> I don't have another power meter etc, uh, not, uh, not ideal anyway, I'll, I'll demonstrate what, what I'm talking about with the, uh, the left hand radio, it's much easier for me to do it with that so anyway that's the, that's just the noise from the thing. Now, okay, so um, if I transmit on high power, I'll, I'll just key the mic. Uh, we have 
it's putting out oh, about just a, just over four watts. That's about right because uh, the supply is a bit low. I'm running off the the solar panels that I've got and the, the voltage is down. I've got lights on, etc. So it's down a bit. And plus the fact. Uh, another thing with the practical wireless article was they didn't discuss the M57713 modules in the back, which give trouble. They are troublesome. They go. And it's it's, it's thermal stress that causes it. They, get, they can get quite hot, uh, then it cools down, and eventually what happens is they crack. It's very common. Both of these have had faulty uh, M57713 chips. So... But they've been replaced with a different uh, different type of chip, which I'll come to just in a few minutes. So on low power, uh, I'll switch to low power. We've got it set to half a watt. That's how I want it set. So um, on sideband, we have the, the low power in, of course, and I'll, I'll do a whistle. <whistles> it still pops out the full power. That's the same with this radio. They're both exactly the same. Now... The modification to cure that issue is very simple. It's to connect a, a, an earth wire between this connection here, the second one in, which is the yellow one, and the ground, which is the end one. Now, I, uh, I've i got here a one ohm resistor or something, a two ohm resistor, uh, and I'm just going to poke it in uh, to the, the holes. It's a bit rough and ready, but it does the job. Right. So that's making a contact. We've pressed the low button in. So if I now uh, switch to sideband, up on which it is, and whistle into the microphone, you're already getting a half watt, which is what you want. And when I press the button to put it onto full power, I'll do the same thing again. You're getting your full power out from it, which is exactly what we want. But there's an issue. And the issue is known, and it's this. Go to CW, it goes into transmit. Take it out, I'll pull it out, it goes off. Okay, so there you go. Now, to confirm that it does with the other one, I shall do the same experiment. Um, I'll put that in there, I'll put that in there. And I will switch to CW. And it's transmitting, it goes off. Okay, so modification will work. If, and I mean only if, you want to use sideband. But if you're a, a, a Morse code person or CW, uh, it won't work. You have to leave it out. Um, the diagram isn't very well done, I have to say. There's a, one or two modifications. Uh, the radio came out in 1980. I, had, I did have a very, very early one. And I also had one of the very last. And there is some changes to it. And they're not documented. In the manual. The other thing is, the other thing that gives trouble in these is inside the PLL box, right? Very common to get PLL issues on these. Um, the crystals, as you can appreciate, these these radios are 40 years old plus, and as we know, crystals gradually age over the years. They go off frequency, and Yezu no longer supply any of the crystals. Okay, you'll get 10.240 ones, okay, but you cannot get them from Yezu, and trying to get them somewhere in the UK is difficult. Uh, I had, I have got one uh, crystal uh, redone for me. It's a third overtone one in the, the PLL box, and uh, the original had corroded through. The big problem with these radios is the glue that they use to hold the stuff in place. Get it out. That's the first thing I would tell you, everybody to do. If they've got these, carefully remove it. Try and get it out with solvent. Use a, a, a pick to pick it out because it causes corrosion. And that's what was wrong with the, the crystal in this one. It had corroded right through the legs. And, of course, when I eventually got the thing out, it was, uh, you know, the, the, the glue out. It fell out because of all the corrosion. So please remove that, that, that stuff. That was not mentioned in the Practical Wireless article either. So I advise anybody that's got a 480, get rid of it if you can. Get all that stuff away. It's kind of brown and it holds the stuff in. You don't need to worry about putting uh, anything else to secure the components in. You probably would if you're using the radios mobile, uh, but if you're using it in base station, etc., don't, don't bother about it. Just get it out. Um, the idea is to clean up the board thoroughly with IPA. Um, I've actually used not WD-40, it's not advisable, uh, but I've used a very, very thin, thin um, rust proofer. Um, you, you use it on cars, actually, and it's uh, called Lanoguard. 
uh, and other there's other manufacturers but the very thin stuff if you put it very very carefully on the board it will will, 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 it will seal out the mo any oxygen and moisture and it will it will stop any further corrosion and it is it, it will not affect any of your capacitors it will not affect the board um it's a according to the manufacturer it's an insulator up to 70 kilovolts but i mean that's a bit uh, arbitrary the way they're saying that but anyway that's beside the point so that's the kind of thing now the other thing of course as i've said to you before is the uh the pa modules the pa modules are known trouble now there's a couple of ways round about this um if you don't use the radio on sideband there are plenty of other options that you can use that will work and you'll get your full rated power and in fact you might even get a little bit more now I have a couple of them that I have have removed uh, relatively recently, simply because I was I have now got another another chip that I can use in these. Um, just trying to find the drawer that all the stuff's in. <laughs> um, where did I put them now? That's another problem, isn't it? Um, they should be in this drawer, but oh, well, maybe they are in this drawer actually. Okay, let me see. Let's have a little look in this drawer. And as you can appreciate, most of my videos are pretty raw. Um, no, I don't think that's what I'm looking for. No, it isn't. That's just, uh, just various transistors and things like that that's in there. Hang on a minute. Uh, till we find it. Ah, uh, no, no, no. uh, where are we? They're usually around a bit here somewhere. Um, knowing me, I'll probably put them in, some, in, the, in the wrong drawer. Or the wrong drawer has decided to go for a wee walk and uh, go somewhere else. Uh, usually that right. That's strange. Oh well, never mind. Well, but there's no point in no point in looking for something that I can't find. Um, yeah, a few weeks ago, right enough. But a lot of things can happen in here in a few weeks. <laughs> uh, never mind. Okay, the the original one is an M five seven seven one three, and that original it, it, they, they, what basically happens is I've explained previously that they they, they run quite warm, they get hot. Uh, they expand, you, you, you stop transmitting, you t your radio goes off and of course uh, the radio, uh, the, sorry, the, the, the chip contracts and eventually you get cracks in the chip and you will then have no output. Okay, so there are a couple of ways you can do this. There's a, a Toshiba SV, uh, I think it's an SV10 and there's also an SV17 um, I think it's a 17. I will put the correct information in the description, guys, uh, so you you not get misled just by what I'm saying here because I don't have any notes in front of me. I never do for these videos. And uh, to, be for, to be honest with you, uh, I'm better actually just put it on there. So that will work. That will give you FM, but it will not work on sideband. It's a class, class C output chip. Uh, it still has filtering in it, so your, your, your resultant RF is clean enough. You, you don't have a problem that, that way. But, like I say, no good for SSP. But there is another one. It's an M57738, I think. I will double check and I will put it up. It's a smaller chip physically, but the pinout is the same. Uh, the same layout of the chip. Uh, but it requires less drive. It doesn't need as much drive as this radio can give out. Now, what all I did was I put in a simple pot. And that's uh, enough to set that pot up so you don't overdrive the chip. If you don't overdrive the chip, you'll get distortion. You don't want to do that. Um, it's 50 ohms. So, again, I used a low-value pot there um, to give us approximately the 50 ohms uh, that the, the, the chip wants to see. And you need to change the bias in very slightly. It doesn't need quite as much bias, but all you need to do on that respect, on the bias, is to put a 5-volt regulator on it, or, or even a Zener, uh, is quite enough to set it up. And you'll get 8 watts. You will get 8 genuine watts out of it, and it works beautifully on SSB. Now, OK, it's not quite as powerful as it was before. You're losing a couple of watts, but the, it's the only way around of these radios now, because... Any of these M57713s you see on AliExpress or any of these other places are fakes. They don't work. Uh, some of them have got absolutely nothing in them. So I'd advise anybody not to touch them, right, because you're just wasting your money. Uh, I will put the right one up there. But once you've got that done, the radios actually are nice. These are good radios. They work very well. The audio quality of them is superb, and uh, you can get into them and fix them if you're so, so, so inclined. Um, this modification for low power on USB and, and LSB 
does work, don't get me wrong, um, it does work so you can do that, but it doesn't on CW, and that was not mentioned in the practical wireless advert, uh, article, sorry. So just to let you know that that is a, it needs to, it need, in some way you need to address it, and I think it's all down to the way it's wired. If you, if anybody's got the manual and tries to trace it through, it's a very arduous route, and it doesn't go directly be, between uh, this connection on the, on the, 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 the connector and the earth it's not a direct connection it goes through other components so what's happening is it's bringing in an oscillator um when you do that and it's 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 like it's bringing in the tone generator or something like that i don't know exactly what it is but uh, uh mind you i haven't flicked the switch uh, i don't know whether the tone generator is on no it's not on um anyway so that's it but uh had a bit of fun you can pick them up relatively cheaply um a good one is very good, I have to say. They're, if you get a really, really good one, they are. Um, capacitor troubles are not too bad on them. You get the odd one. Uh, I think I had a couple where the uh, audio coupling capacitor, I think it was a one microfarad or something like that, had gone way, way low, low in value. And it was just really tinny. There was no bass in it. It was just sounded thin, the audio. So uh, that was a simple enough uh, fix but they're fiddly uh, there's about 150 transistors in these things but most of the components are of, of good quality but there you go i just thought i'd put this on uh, just so you can uh, see what we're doing here so the lids will be going back on this i'm not going to do the ssb mod there's no point um because i don't run transverters or anything like that and i rarely use them on ssb anyway because i use my 711e or uh, my 911e in, in in the house so there you go okay guys thanks for watching take care and uh, we'll catch up another day